Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve generate parentheses, lead code number 22. So we're given n pairs of parentheses, and we need to write a function to generate all the combinations of well-formed parentheses. So here's what they mean. If n is equal to three, we have three pairs of these. So basically three open brackets and three closing brackets. So here's the valid parentheses strings. You could have it looking like this, where basically it's all nested like that. You could have this outside one, and then two of these are nested. You could have over here that one of them is nested and then the others on the outside and let me move this over you could have basically the same arrangement here it's basically the same as this one but it's shifted over you can see it just kind of moves over there and then the last one is that none of them are nested so you can see here we have a total of one two three four five valid ways of arranging these parentheses and n equals one is pretty simple it's literally just some brackets so i do think that n equals three is the best example here so we have these three pairs of parentheses here so our solution starts as empty. We have nothing so far. So can we pick an open bracket? Is that valid? Yeah, so far that's a valid string. However, the closing bracket already is not. There is nothing you could do to try and make this valid here because this isn't closing anything. The point of closing brackets is to close other open brackets, but this is not gonna close anything because there's nothing here. So this is not a valid path to go down. Okay, so really let's just start this as an open bracket. Now our options again, as always, are open bracket or closing bracket. Now, can we pick an open bracket? Yes, that's fine. We have one available because, you know, we've only used one and we could still make this valid. There's different possibilities for this. And over here, now we could actually use a closing bracket because that closing bracket is actually closing this bracket that we've used here. It's doing its purpose. And so you could actually have lots of valid solutions from here. So both of these solutions are fine. Okay, let's keep this going. So if we were to go over here, could we have an open bracket? Yes, we can. We have a third one of available. We've used all of them now, so we won't be able to open from there, but that's fine. We could go down that road. And from here, can we use a closing bracket? Can we do a close here? Yes, it is actually closing a bracket, so that's fine. Over here, we could have an open bracket, so this is fine. Over here, no, there's no way to close this stuff. Again, you always have to have something to close. Now, let's really try to formalize why this doesn't work, because this keeps coming up here. Why can we not close here? Well, we need to close a bracket. If you keep track of how many open brackets you have at any step. And if you keep track of how many closing brackets that you have at any step, we're running into this situation where the number of open brackets is not bigger than the number of closing brackets. You'd need this condition to be true if you're going to go down a right path here and use a closing bracket because it has to close something. Okay, for it to close something, you'd have to have more open brackets than you have closing brackets. Because if they were equal, imagine that you had the same number of open brackets and closing brackets like we do over here. Well, if you add a closing bracket, that can't close anything because this has already been closed because they're equal. So we can only use a closing bracket if this is true. So we can close if open is greater than close, if the number of open brackets is greater than close. So this is not going to work. Clearly, we can't use an open bracket if you don't have any. So if you only have three available and you've used all three, well, then you can't open. And otherwise, you can open. You can see we didn't have any problems opening here or here or here or even over here. There's no restrictions to open other than you can only open if open, so the number of opens we have, is less than n. If you have n pairs of brackets, that means you have n open brackets. And so this basically just means do you have an open bracket? bracket available to use. If you do, then you can open it. Otherwise, you cannot. Okay, so let's fully finish off this tree here. We know we're actually never going to be able to go left from here on because, you know, you're never going to get that open bracket back. So you're actually going to be forced to keep closing every single time. And that's going to be okay because we haven't really closed at all. We get to the very end here and we're able to close and we say, okay, we are at a base case. Why? Because we've used all of the brackets available. Okay, you need to use all of your brackets for it to be a solution. And so this is our final base case here. We have a solution. So you have a valid solution if mathematically, if you have n pairs of these, so if n was equal to three here, that actually means the length of our solution is equal to n times two. We have six things here. So if your length was equal to n times two, that would be a solution. And so you'd append that to your list of solutions, and then you would work your way back up. So down this solution, can we open? Yes, we actually can. And so that'll look like that. Can we close? Yes, we can. We can close like this. Over here, can we open? Yes, we can. We have one available. And over here, 
here, can we close? Yes, we can. We would be closing that final bracket over here. So over here, we have opened all that we can possible. That's going to force it down the path of just closing. So we'd get that. And then finally, it would turn into this, which is another valid solution. So we got that one. This one right here, we're not able to close right now. We'd have to open. So he's going to do an open at the end. And this one would then turn into the solution of closing at the end because we've now opened everything available. So we have one of these. This guy over here has also used up all of his opens. So he's just going to be forced to close close twice in a row and so he's going to turn into this solution here and this guy here you can probably tell who he's going to turn into we have this and then we are forced to close and so he is going to be that final one there and so these are all of our valid solutions as we saw at the beginning Okay, so you can see here we have two branches and they're defined by if statements and we have a solution. I forgot to write this. If the length of our solution, just however many brackets we've used here, if that is equal to two times n here. Okay, so let's code this up. Okay, so as you can see here, these are actually string solutions. And so what we're gonna have to do is build up a list of strings. And then when you get to a solution, we would kind of join that all into a single string. It's called the string builder pattern. So we'd get our two dynamic arrays. We'd get answer and sol are both equal to empty arrays. So answer is going to be the final thing that we return. It'll be our list of strings. And solution is going to be basically one at a time, one of these, uh, but it's not actually a string string because you can't really append to a string that's really annoying and if you were to it's actually more time complex it is than just appending to a list so the solution is going to be a list of its characters a list of the brackets and after it gets to a solution we're going to join that into a string okay so let's write a recursive backtracking function so we'll call it backtrack and it is going to take two parameters we want to keep track of the number of open brackets we have as well as the number of closing brackets we have those are what are defining our ability to go down the branches. So firstly, are we at a solution? Well, if the length of the solution is equal to two times n, so that means if we've used up all of the things that we have available, well then yes, we're at a solution. And so we will answer dot append the empty string dot join of the solution. So solution is going to be a list of the brackets as individual strings. We're going to join up that list of strings into just one string and append that to answer. And from there we have a solution, so we're just going to return. Okay, so let's actually go down the left path here so if open let's call that open with two n's so if open is less than n so that's our way of saying we have an open bracket available if this is true we can go down the left path of using an open bracket so how do we do that well we solution dot append a open bracket so we will give it one of these now we want to deal with that situation so we call backtrack on well we have one more open than we used to because we just open so we just open whatever we had plus one and we we have the same number of closing brackets, so that's just gonna be close. Okay, now after we went down that path here, we then want to backtrack and undo what we did. So we want to solution.pop, which is going to take off that open bracket that we used. Now what we want to do is try and go down the right branch. So to go down the right branch, we're trying to use a closing bracket. We can do that if open is greater than close. So as long as we actually have something that we can close, well, then we can use a closing bracket. How do we do that? We solution.append a closing bracket and we go down that path so we backtrack on the same number of open brackets but we have one more close so we have close plus one and then when we're back here we want to undo what we did here we want to pop that off so we want to solution dot pop that'll take off that closing bracket Okay, and that is actually our function. It's really just these three cases here. And we would initially call this on backtrack of zero and zero because we've used nothing at the very beginning. That is going to go and generate all of our solutions and put them in answer. And so we can just return answer. And if we were to run this, this will work. Okay, let's think about the time and space complexity of this. So we have two branches. Okay, so that usually causes a doubling effect. Now we know that we don't always double because we can't guarantee we go down both paths, but say that we roughly could. So that would mean it would be roughly big O of two to the N and the space complexity of this, this would actually be a depth of, well, we're going to get a bracket every single time here. And so we finish only when we have used all of the brackets. That's gonna have a depth of roughly O of two two times n, except that's just the same as n, so that's roughly big O of n. And I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.